Josh, I'm getting some tweets from some uh, folks who follow us uh, who aren't as geeky as us in the OpenStack world. Oh dear. Asked you to provide a uh, OpenStack 101. Yeah, they're hearing Diablo, Nova, all these kind of buzzwords. Mm. So just quickly, just give a OpenStack 101 for the audience. Sure. You know, what, they, what do they need to know? I can do it in five numbers, okay? OpenStack is one community around two kinds of clouds. That would be public clouds and private clouds. So in your own data center or somebody else's data center. It has three kinds of interfaces. So you've got a command line interface, you've got a web dashboard, and you've got a programmatic API. All three of those work in the same way, and they service the same things. Now the fourth thing is you've got four kinds of resources exposed through those interfaces. So you've got two kinds of storage. That would be new object storage and old block storage. You've got virtual networks, and you've got virtual compute resources. So those are your four resource pools. And finally, you have five actors. This is the most confusing part, okay? You have vendors. <laughs> that would be folks like That's Piston confusing. Cloud. Who sell, <laughs> who sell clouds or cloud software. You have operators, the folks that run clouds, either, again, private or public. You have auditors. People forget about these guys. They're the ones Compliance. who have to look under the covers, yeah. but they're actually not delivering value. You have users, cloud users, meaning they connect to those APIs or the command line tools. Then you have end users. That's somebody who actually uses an application that's hosted on a cloud, and they may not even know it's hosted on a cloud. Right, so if you pull your phone out of your pocket, that's and you an connect app. to any app on your phone, you're an end user of cloud, whether you realize it or not. So those, that's OpenStack in five numbers. And then let me follow, then what was the, what was either the, uh, the event that created the desire to create OpenStack, or what was kind of the, the mission, the really high level mission, okay. when you guys got together with however sure. many people you were uh, five years ago sure. in, here in lovely Portland? So I was running a team at NASA, and we had a mandate to do something about NASA's data and how they were building applications. And it was a very broadly defined mandate because it was Skunk Works unfunded project. Um, and we originally set out to build a platform as a service that, that the agency could use. Let me, and it, was yeah. it because their existing thing wasn't working well? Is it because they saw a new age of types of data or amount all, of all applications? Of the above. I mean, NASA had at least 300 data centers, didn't even know how to count them. Okay. Uh, thousands of applications okay. written in dozens of languages. So we had security concerns, we had cost concerns, we had legacy concerns, and really, NASA's mandate is to collaborate but we can't let people at our infrastructure because it's also one of the most secure government agencies. And so we were trying to build something on the inside of NASA that looked like things folks could run on the outside. That was the path to open source. Okay. Was to say, if we build this as an open source technology, we can use it, other people can use copies of it, and we don't have to you know, give them tunnels through our firewall every day. Which sounds ridiculously uh, forward thinking for a big government agency to actually say, here with the, the crown jewels and some of the most secretive stuff I'm sure we have, um, as a government, let's use the open source model to drive the innovation to clean up the spaghetti sure. nightmare. So if you look at the team, uh, my team that, that built this at NASA, um, none of us were at NASA before this project and none of us are still there. <laughs> um, so it was, more, it, was, it was a very rare window in time. Sure. We had inspired leadership